Welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. Thank you once again for joining me. So I just, within the last few days, found out about this new found footage film that just became available on streaming called Dagger and decided to give it a watch, it looked interesting, and wanted to give you my thoughts. So Dagger follows these two fame-seeking YouTubers named Thea and Louise, which is an obvious play on Thelma and Louise, and these are two uh, probably college-age girls who basically are filming them doing these illegal type activities. And so because of that, they actually have to conceal their identities, but they have basically taken it upon themselves to sort of act like these modern day Robin Hood types. They're kind of like the ethics police. They see people, businesses out there doing things that are unethical. And so they go in there and steal their stuff or break their stuff or whatever. And then of course they upload their videos to YouTube. So we're introduced to them from the beginning. We find out that they're on their way to their next location for their next video. And they are planning on stealing from this film crew who is at this remote location off in sort of the countryside in, in England at this very kind of luxurious old school mansion type house. And this film crew inadvertently awakens this spirit of this occultist whose spirit dwells and resides at this mansion. And overall, I was pretty mixed on Dagger. It, it has a handful of elements that I think work pretty well and are effective, and also some elements that I didn't really enjoy. So this one's kind of interesting, though, because I think the the acting performances are are pretty good. I think particularly the, the two performances from the two main young girls are, are pretty solid, and they have good on-screen chemistry. They seem like they have this real friendship and real relationship. And so that came across quite well and felt pretty authentic. And so the, the performances are, are pretty solid, but their characters are just really obnoxious and annoying. And their characters are kind of like I said, almost this like social justice warrior types to where they're just they're very self-righteous and and consider themselves to be like, you know, morally superior to everyone. And they go around, you know, thinking they're doing good because they're, you know, doing all this stuff to the quote unquote bad guys sort of thing. But their characters were just really obnoxious and, and irritating. And it, it really kind of hindered me from enjoying the experience of the movie as much as I would have hoped. Now, if you saw Dashcam, which came out, I think, a couple years ago, that movie was, it's kind of notoriously known now for having just an awful lead character. So they're, they're not quite to that level. It's not to that degree, but they're, they're kind of headed down into that direction. But anyways, once the girls actually get to the house is when the real sort of horror element kicks in. As I said, the film crew has awakened the spirit of this occultist, and they show up. The house is empty and they find this tablet of these recordings that the filmed crew recorded. And so the presentation of the found footage is kind of interesting because they've found this footage and then we're seeing the footage that they have found. Now, some of the elements that I think work pretty good here is the, the film actually like looks pretty good. And I actually found out it was shot on an iPhone and considering it was shot on an iPhone, um, it looks pretty solid. I do like the set. It's mostly a one location type movie. The opening, they're driving around in a car, but most of the film takes place at this old mansion type home, which is just a pretty cool location and definitely lends pretty well to the the sort of the vibes and the atmosphere that they are trying to execute when all the horror stuff kicks in. I have no idea what the budget was on this movie, but considering it is more of a, you know, small scope, almost a one location shot on an iPhone, it has to be pretty minimal. And so given those budgetary restraints, there is some stuff here that I think works pretty well. Like I said, the film looks good. I really like the location they got. And some of the horror elements are pretty effective as well. There's a scene that involves a stabbing that is pretty well executed. It, it's pretty shocking and unexpected. Again, the performances and the reactions from everybody, they do a pretty solid job kind of selling the whole insanity that unfolds after that happens. And it doesn't really do anything mind-blowing that we haven't seen before, but there is still some pretty well-executed sequences here. Overall, I would still consider it more of kind of a, a mid-tier found footage movie. If if the characters were a little bit more likable, then I would I would give it more of a, a solid recommendation. I'd still maybe give it like a, a weak recommendation recommendation. 
Um, it, I, I got it on Amazon. I rented it. It's, it's only like three bucks. And I definitely think it's worth at least three bucks, especially if you like found footage and, you know, the, the premise here sounded interesting to you. I'd say it's at least worth checking out. Plus, I think it's always good to, to give some support to the lower budget indie type movies and stuff like that. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Dagger. Thanks for checking out this review. If you got something out of it, do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.